So we're on this idea of how to build generational wealth, how to build generational wealth. And so in coming weeks, we'll be going into the nuts and bolts around that. But these first couple weeks, it's important that we actually get our minds right, that we understand what does uh, the scripture talk about as it relates to generational wealth, and also that we position ourselves differently than we think about wealth in the traditional kind of the, the worldly sense, right? And so uh, there was a, a study that was published, and you see it comes up multiple times. It talks about that 70% of wealthy families lose their wealth by the second generation, and by the third generation, 90% of the wealth is lost. Some of that is by design, so um, there's some affluent people understand their belief is that, listen, if I give these kids a whole bunch of money, it's just going to mess up their life. Anybody willing to take the chance, though? Don't you? <laughs> right? I would have been okay if my parents, had, you know, left me, left me a boatload of money. Mommy's still here. Maybe she's sitting on it. She didn't tell me that Dad left her a, a ton of cash, so I'll wait and see. But I'm willing to take the chance. But the truth of the matter is many people blow their money. There's um, a group of billionaires, uh, including Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and others. I think there's about 240 of them now. And they've committed to leave the majority of their wealth to not their children. So creating foundations generally to address issues of education or health and so forth. And then there's some people um, who say, I absolutely refuse to leave my kids any money because they need to make their way like I made mine. That's an interesting perspective as well. But the point is, there's no clarity around this issue of generational wealth and how to do it. And so for us as believers, of course, we want to know, God, what do you want me to do? God, how do we pass on whatever we've generated or created so that it is a blessing for our children? So there's a couple verses we want to look at as review. So Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, we introduced this last week. It said, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So it says a good person is not just thinking about their children, but in fact, they're thinking about their grandchildren. So for those of us who, who have children or have nieces or nephews or other young people in our life, are you thinking about how will I bless them? That was a question. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So our mindset should be not a, consuming everything that I have for myself, B, even worrying about our children, but thinking about how do we multi-generationally forward God's blessings. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, it says, therefore, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. And so he's saying, listen, God thinks about this stuff not just one or two generations, but he says, when you love me and when you follow my commands, my blessings will follow to a thousand generations. That's a long time, amen? And the truth of the matter is many of us are sitting here today because of the manifestation of God's blessing throughout the history of our families. And so that should be the mindset that we ask ourselves, what can I be doing to bless a thousand generations? On the flip side, we know that much of what we see, the challenges even in the Middle East today, are the result of some decisions that Abraham made. Have you thought about that? The issues between Israel and Muslims, the Palestinians, go all the way back to Abraham and his children, Ishmael and Isaac. Do you understand that what you do today may reverberate for generations in history. It's quite a sobering thought, but it also makes us think how important what we do today matters and its implications for the future. So let's look uh, at a couple kingdom keywords. I want to pray first and then get in. Father, in the name of Jesus, open up our hearts and minds to be receptive to your word, to see wonderful things in your word. Lord God, open up our hearts to be receptive and give us the spirit of revelation and wisdom that we can know you better. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So kingdom keywords, these are some ideas that you need to understand in order to fully grasp the content of what we're saying. So the first one is generational wealth. Assets accumulated and passed down from one generation 
a family to another. We talked about what assets are. I think we broaden them beyond just material possessions, but even the values that we have, right? Even the life lessons that our young people learn by observing or watching us. The second one is this word bless. We throw this around a little bit, ask people, how are you? I'm blessed. God bless you and so forth. But the word biblically means to place under God's favor, his care and protection. Anybody want to bless anybody? Anybody want to be blessed under God's favor, his care, and his protection? And so our focus for uh, this next however many weeks is laying the foundation for building true generational wealth. And we're looking at the life of Abraham. So we're in the book of Genesis, studying the life of Abraham and all that he did and how we can learn from his lessons. And so the sermon in the sentence this morning If you take nothing home else but this, we are blessed to be the connector to the blesser. The reason that we are blessed is to be the connector to the blesser. Does that make sense? We are blessed to be the connector to the blesser. And so I have a little illustration this morning. We have, I'm going to need, let me see, I'm going to need a contractor, a person with a lawn care business, and a Give me a, uh, a knowledge worker. Give me an a, a attorney. I need three people. So let me show you something. You have... Yeah, you can come on up. Yeah, that's cool. All right, see. My, my wife does like tools. I bought, I bought her an a, a electric lawnmower that she loves. It's expensive, too. All right. What's up, boy? Okay, and uh, let me see. So you can be the contractor, multi-million dollar building business. Huh? You don't want to be the lawyer? Okay. Give this back. That see? Mr. Right, right. I always <laughs> want another job. So, somebody, come on. Contractors make money, man. Lawyers are struggling yeah. right now. True. True. All right. I'll put in floor. <laughs> okay, that's your specialty. All right, so, and I'm, I'm going to let you, you can come up here and act like my, my computer's having a challenge. Come on. All right, so he, he deals with the computer. He has the drill. She has the leaf blower. They're, they're all multi-million dollar entrepreneurs, and they want to pass on generationally the wealth that they've built, right? So let's see what you can do. With the tool? Yes, with the tool. Uh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, what, what, what we got? No, no, nothing happening. Imagine your, your, your battery died. What what we doing? This, this week, so Friday, my wife called me. I was in a meeting. My wife called, babe, the power's out. I'm like, okay. The car's in the garage. And the power's out. You know what that means? <laughs> she can't get out the garage. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, sir. <laughs> right? <laughs> my brother-in-law trying to get me in trouble. Teach the woman how to open the garage door. Sir, I got in my car. I'm on my way, honey. I'm on my way. You, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's Look, girl, all you got to do is disconnect. Boy, please. And I know you ain't telling that one to disconnect nothing. <laughs> anyway, see how people try to get you in trouble? Be careful when you listen to the advice speaker. So anyway, I run home. It's all good. But the point is when the power is out. When there is no power. And even this. So here's the thing. We get a little arrogant, right? So... This right here, this is beautiful because, watch this. Yeah, do your thing. yeah, yeah. So, right, she has power. And what happens is when we have battery life, you see, sometimes we get a little arrogant like, I don't need. I am independent. Now, even, even for this, so a friend of mine bought me this thing, which is amazing. So this will charge the phone, the computer, whatever. So I can be independent of the outlet. <laughs> Powerful. The challenge is, after about two hours, right, you can't see, but it says 100% right now, but after about two hours, it will say 0%. And it will charge whatever I asked it to charge, but thereafter, guess what? The power is gone. 
And so no matter how powerful we may think we are, ultimately, we need to be connected to the connector. And so as it relates to the computer, I keep this little cord with me, right? So I put the computer out, plug this in. So the, the dead computer, plug this in. And then all of a sudden, the little charging light comes on. And we're back in business. With this situation, I charged that for a little bit, put it in the charger, started back up. My man plugs in. I must have had a cordless at the top. What you got? What you got? What you got? All right, we're in business. Hey, oh. <laughs> Don't take the illustration too far, son. Right? But the point is, and watch this, I'm going to add an extra layer to you. You're good. So this is, this piece is us. It's right here. But you see, this is the generational piece. And sometimes we forget. We think it's all about us. But you see, this cord, as you can see, is pretty short. But because of the generational piece that goes back years and years and years. You see, young people, we need not forget those people who got us here. You see, sometimes the extension cord or the power strip, it get confused. <laughs> but it's only because it's connected generationally to the power source. And the, here's the thing about the power source. The power source is invisible. You see, we don't see the power source, but we see what it is able to do. And so when we understand that we are simply the connectors. And we connect, and it says, we'll see in a minute, we can run that, we can run the charger, we can run the drill, we can run the computer all at the same time. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's go to the scripture. Thank you all. Bravo. Thank you for my assistance. All right, so let's jump in. What time is it? <clears throat> Football season's over, right? So nobody can know where to be. Right. So let's go. So the first kingdom truth, we are connected to the blesser through his promise to Abraham. We are connected to the blesser. I gave you a sermon in a sentence already. Right. So we are connected to the blesser through the promise to Abraham. Oftentimes we read the scripture <clears throat> and people say, well, <clears throat> that was written to whoever that time, whatever. But I want to show you in a minute that the message of the blesser and Abraham's blessing is connected to us. He is the extension cord even though we may be the power strip. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Disconnect from everything that you know, all of those things that you are uh, depending on, that expectation of that inheritance, that stuff that you uh, just knew was going to happen. I need you to do, disconnect from that. And then go to the land I will show you. And then God says what? I will. I will make you a great nation. We should not lose sight of the fact that God is the one that even gives us the initial, quote, unquote, wealth to be able to pass on. He is the source. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. What does bless mean? To put us under his favor, his care, his protection. So it says, I will put you under my favor, my care, and my protection. And I will make your name great. You want to be great? You want to be famous? God says, I'll do that. And you will be a blessing. You will be a source that places other people under God's favor, his care, and his protection. I will bless those who bless you. So the people who bless you, I will bless. And the people who curse you, I will curse. And curse simply means I will remove from under my favor, my protection, and my care. And all the peoples of the earth, what? Will be blessed through you. Keep going. Genesis chapter 18, verses 18 to 19. Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations will be blessed through him. This is the generational piece. All nations are going to be blessed through Abraham. Verse 19, for I have chosen him, so watch this, he will direct his children and his household after him. That's his descendants. 
he will multi-generationally direct his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and what is just. Right is righteous in right relationship with God, just that which is fair, that which is appropriate. So Abraham's part, there's always God's part and there's our part. We want God to do his part. We want God to be faithful to his part. But God, you said in your word. But he also said in his word that we have some things to do. Amen? And so he says, I will bless you, Abraham, but your task is what? To direct your children and your descendants, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, to keep the way of the Lord, to do what is right and just. And then, or so that, the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised to him. So God's promise to Abraham is contingent. And multi-generational blessings are contingent upon us sharing with our descendants who God is, what he's done, and equipping and teaching them to be right and just. Does that make sense? So a real simple application. Paying our bills is being right and just. Amen? If I borrow the money from you, now you're going to be greedy. He said on time, right? (laughs) Pay your bills on time. Whatever the agreement is, And so when we don't pay our bills on time, when we have the resources to do so, and it's not that things won't happen and all of that. That's true. But sometimes it says, oh, I forgot. Or I chose to do something else with my money. But the new J's came out. Don't you understand? (laughs) Right? And so we have to do what is right and just. And then the Lord says, he will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Now let's fast forward to the New Testament and talk about us. So in Christ Jesus, King Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ. Watch this. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Here's verse 29 is the key. If you belong to Christ, then what? You are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Is that you? Are you baptized into Christ? Do you have a relationship with him? And so that means that you are now the heir, the inheritor of the promise that was made to Abraham. Amen. It makes sense? I got one person who understood what that meant. <laughs> he says, I'm going to bless you and make you great, and you will be a blessing. Number two, when we connect people to the blesser, they will want to be connected to us. When we connect people to the blesser, they will want to be connected to us. Listen, I'm going to give this to you for free. When we enter any place, space, job, school, whatever, the question that we ask, please write this down, how can I be a blessing? For my entrepreneurs in the house, this is the question that should drive your business. Not what should I charge, not how much will I make, Will they give me what I'm worth? The question is, how may I be a blessing? Because when being a blessing becomes your number one priority, God then can take over. But if you're going for self, looking out for self, then God's like, you got it. But when we decide, God, I want to simply be the connector. I want to be the source. I want to be the one other folks can plug into and then connect to you through the blessing of the original power for the original cord to connect to the power source, which is God. And so that's the question you ask. How can I be a blessing? That's the question that drives us as a ministry. It's never been about, God, how can we get broke out? How will we get paid? It's God, how can we be a blessing to this community in which you nested my grandparents when they founded this place in 1956. God, how can we continue to be a blessing? How can we continue to teach the word of God? How can we be a physical blessing? How can we make this community more like heaven on earth? So tomorrow when you go to work, tomorrow's a holiday? What kind of job y'all got? That's that's a day to get caught up. You know we're behind. Listen, (laughs) tomorrow's catch-up day. Write that down. It's catch-up day. Tomorrow's catch-up day. Listen, when you go to work on Tuesday, (laughs) now I'm talking to the wrong people, but all of you are going to work tomorrow. All the business people here, you going to work tomorrow? 
Entrepreneurs, you're going to work tomorrow. I bet you are. Going to work tomorrow. Those of you going to work tomorrow, get up in the morning and say, how can I be a blessing? Let's do this. Do you, if you're housed, in your house, get up and say, how can I be a blessing today? For your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, your, the dog, how can I be a blessing today? That should be the question on our lips every day. The dog, yeah, man. Yeah, I got a dog. I got a dog. Right? How can I be a blessing? Watch this. Laban, again, you know the backstory, or you don't go read it, chapter 30. Laban was cheating this guy, Jacob. I mean, his nephew, that's right. He did this dude dirty. He gave him his oldest daughter when he was trying to marry the younger daughter, and everybody kept it hush hush. He wakes up on his wedding day, the day after his wedding night, and whoo, the wrong person is in the bed. All bad. Better than television. Anyway, verse 27. Laban said to him, he's talking to Jacob, if I have find, found favor in your eyes, please stay. What's happening is Jacob is like, I'm out. I have worked for you for 20 years now. I got these kids. You gave me uh, the wife that I wanted seven years after I had the one. You made me work an extra seven years for what I want. I wanted. You gave me the one with the, what did it say? She was weak in the eyes or something. It wasn't good. Wow. Anyway, but watch this. He said, I got to go. And Laban, the guy who cheated Jacob, says, if I have found favor in your eyes, Jacob's like, man, please. Anyway, please stay. Why is he asking to stay? I have learned by divination. The occult is real. I've learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me. Why? Because of you. He says, I have learned that the reason I'm blessed is because of you. Listen, your physical presence should bring the blessings of the Lord. I didn't go into it this morning, but the reason that God even checked before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he checked with Moses, and he gave Moses all this conversation. Moses like, all right, if 10 people are there, you won't blow the place up. Is that right, God? God's like, cool, there's 10 people. I won't do it. So the fact that Moses was intervening, and because there were, if there would have been 10 righteous people, I don't know how large the city was, but it wasn't, it was more than 10. And there was only five, and it wasn't even that many, because it was what? Lot? Abraham, sorry. Abraham, Lot, his wife, and a couple kids. So the point was, God allowed Abraham to have intervention, at least conversation. And if there had been 10 righteous people there, God said, I wouldn't even destroy the city. So our presence can even stay the hand of God. Do you understand that? Your presence is supposed to bring the influence of God. Whether it's your house, your school, your workplace, your job, your business, whatever. That's powerful stuff, man. And so he says, listen, I understand even by the occult that the reason I'm blessed. And then you want to get a raise? Be a blessing. What does he say? Name your wages. I'm so blessed, I'll give you what you want. Some of y'all haven't gotten a raise in a minute. Is that because you're not being a blessing? Are you adding value when you come? To, do people, are people glad to see you when you come to work? Like, here come blessing. Yes, sir. What the, listen, like, wait, hold up. My man is here. We trying to get some work done. Hold up, hold up. Let me plug in. And the Bible says what? All nations of the world, all the tools, the attorney, the, the contractor, the leaf blower guy, everybody will be blessed when they connect to the blesser. Name your wages. You haven't gotten a raise in a little bit? The question is maybe you're not being a big enough blessing. I, I say this to young people. I'm going to give this to y'all for a week, too. When you start a job, first three months, first three months, y'all listen, first three months, you need them. Right? That 90 days, you need them. Everything after that, you should make them dependent on you. Make them dependent on you. Make them dependent on you. You should know the job better. 
You should be creating efficiencies. There's technology. One, one of my, our, our employees is on maternity leave. My life is jacked up. I said to her day one, I said, you know what, right now you need a job. I said, in three months, I should need you. That young woman has made that true. <laughs> my stuff is so behind, it's crazy. I told people in January, I'm not taking any appointments till March. She come back in March. Man, I, I messed up my calendar. I tried to send somebody a Zoom link. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh. <laughs> right, because this woman has made me dependent on her. Because she understands she's supposed to be the source of blessing. Let's keep going. Name your wages. You want to raise, make yourself indispensable. And Jacob said to him, you know how I have worked for you and how your livestock has fared under my care. <laughs> and see, when you, <laughs> you know, when you, when you know your blessing, he got a little spicy with him, didn't he? He said, the little you had before I came. <laughs> You know, you really wasn't doing all that much, bro. <laughs> he says, it, before I came, before I came, increased greatly. Thank you. Devil don't want y'all to get this. All right. The little I had before you came has increased greatly. Why? The Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. He said, that little bit you had, the little couple sheep and stuff you had, since I came, I blew you up. That's why he said, please stay. Baby, baby, please don't leave me. Did you see him? He's like, please stay. Baby was begging, please stay. Why? Because he was blessed because of him. Let's keep going. When we connect people to the blesser, they will be, want to be connected to us. Let's check out Zechariah. You, many of you have probably never seen this scripture before in your life. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, let's go with you because, why? We have heard that God is with you. When you have God with you, it says people will want to connect to you. When people see God's favor in your life, when people see the impact that you're having in that space, whether it's school, work, wherever it is, people will want to connect with you. Number three, when we connect people to the blesser, people will bless us. Genesis chapter 39. Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Now, you remember Joseph, and he was immature, and he was telling his brother, you know y'all going to bow down to me, so forth and so on. Encourage you to read. It's great stuff. Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. His brother sold him. Potiphar, an Egyptian, was one of Pharaoh's officials. The captain of the guard, he bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. So, Joseph had been... Um, enslaved. His, their whole family system was, I don't have time. But anyway, check it out. He was enslaved. Verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. So even in slavery, it says the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Watch this. When his master saw what? That the Lord was with him. And that the Lord gave him success in everything that he did. You see this? The Lord is the source, but the connector is Joseph. Let's keep going. Joseph found favor in his eyes, and he became his attendant. So he started out as your basic everyday run-of-the-mill slave. The master saw whatever Joseph did, it says he was successful, he was blessed. He had the magic touch, if you will. And so because he had God's favor, then it says that Potiphar made him his attendant. And Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted his care to everything he owned. But this guy was a slave. And in a matter of weeks, months, we don't know how long it was, but he went from a slave to running the house. You see what I'm saying? So when you say we want promotion, the question is, are we representing God, are we being the connector to the blessings of God? Are we enhancing God's name, his reputation? Do people want to, listen, most people hire based on relationships. You know what they do? Right now, I'm trying to find some people to work. And what I'm doing is talking to people I know. You understand? Most jobs are pre-filled. Amen? Is, is that right? 
HR guy? <laughs> Most jobs are pre-filled. And if you are excellent at what you do, the question becomes, hey, you got any siblings? You got a sister? <laughs> a mama? A cousin? Right? If you, that's another metric. If you kill in the game at work, people want to ask you, hey, do you know somebody? Why? Because the assumption is that people who are about something hang out with people who are about something. Amen? And so, our guy, Joseph, gets put in charge of the whole house. And he says, he was entrusted his care, everything that he owned. I mean, he was a slave. He ran the house. Verse 5. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian. Why? Because of Joseph. I told you, our presence should evoke the blessings of God. The profit margin of the business that you work should go up because you're there. The test scores in the school in which you work should go up because you're there. Expenses should go down. And it's not magic, but it's because you are leading, allowing God to lead you and you're working in alignment with his intention, his design. The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything that Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says that our boy Joseph was working in the house. But because he was there, it says the field was blessed too. Amen. And that's something. Are you a blessing? Do you aspire to be the connector to the blesser? That is our kingdom assignment. So it doesn't matter what your job is. It doesn't matter what your role is. If you're a parent, I want to connect my children to the blesser. If you're a teacher, I want to connect my class to the blesser. If you're a ministry leader, I want to connect the people who are in the ministry that I lead. I want to connect them to the blesser because the world should be blessed. We got all these outlets. The world should be blessed because of me, because I'm connected multi-generationally to the blesser. Verse six. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. He said the only thing dude even had to worry about was his, was his meal. Because Joseph wasn't over in the kitchen. So what are you doing tomorrow, today, to make yourself indispensable? I don't, I don't want my wife to know how to disconnect the garage door. Why should she have to worry about that? No, I'll, t I'll teach her how to do it. Like, I teach, I've taught all my kids. Girls, boy, everybody. Here's a little basic work, service work on your car. Do your thing. But if you, you know, and if you, you, you got a, in a relationship, just test the joke. You're like, I ain't helpless, but let me see what you got. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Or if he asking you how to change the tire, you got a problem. Or maybe train the boy. I don't know. Give him a little room. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't going to take that too far. Get in trouble. But the point is, I love my wife. The way I showed her I love her, I ran home, picked her up, and we came down here together. I didn't even open the garage door. That's a date. Come on, girl, let me show you how to uh, take this garage door. It looks. <laughs> See, we, they don't understand, Tyrone. When you, when you got 37 years in, dates change, baby. I ain't got to spend up a whole bunch of money. Went out to dinner last night. Jokers are spending all kind of money. I'm like, dude, man, listen. I was spending money too that I think about it. But the point is it can be a whole lot simpler. But more importantly, I want to be there for her. I want her to be able to call me and know that I got her. And she does the same for me. Amen. See what I'm saying? And so whether you're talking about your house or your kids or work or school or whatever, the point is I want to connect you to the blesser. And then when we stop focusing on what we want and just focus on what God wants, the Bible says God blessed. And my man Joseph went from being a slave to running the joint. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter 39. 
verses 19 to 23. Now, our boy Joseph, again, you need to go read it for yourself. But Joseph was working in Potiphar's house. It says my man was, he was built, he was handsome. And so Potiphar's wife is now looking at Joseph. Like, hey, Joe, you kind of cute, boy. Right? And Joe was like, no, nah, sis. And if you notice, if you pay attention, we get a chance to read it. He says, that would be against my master. And more importantly, that would be against God. I can't do that. So she was trying to entice him. And then she got real straightforward with it. She said, come sleep with me. You know, that's the, the Bible be cleaning it up a little bit. She ain't even say sleep. The problem ain't sleep. Amen. Ain't nobody ever had no problems getting sleep. But anyway. And then he runs out, but she grabs his coat. And then she screams, ah, he tried to molest me. And so this is where we pick up. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. So Potiphar was hot because she lied on him because he would continue to deny her request. Verse 20, Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. So look at my boy Joe. He went from his brother's kind of... Uh, uh, Kind of basically what kidnapped the cat, sold him. Everything was good. He blew up. He was successful. And now my man is in prison. But you see, because Joseph had a system, he still asked the same question. How can I be a blessing? So I'm in the joint. That's fine. No worries. The Bible says, but while Joseph was in prison, and this is the key. It doesn't matter where you are. The question is simply, is the Lord with you? Is the Lord with you? He got locked up for being righteous. That means that God was with him. And so the question is simply, is God with you? It doesn't matter what your job is. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't even matter if you get an opportunity to work elsewhere. That's what happens when you get fired. Just get an opportunity to work elsewhere, right? But because God was guiding him and God had a plan, he was trying to move him from somewhere. And I believe even the background, Joseph was spoiled a little bit and he was immature and all of that. And so God had to knock those rough edges off my man so that when he landed where he's going to land in a minute, he was ready. You understand what was going on here? And so check it out. The Lord was with him and he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Watch this. He's in the prison. He gets taken out of the prison. There's going to be a famine. He, he uh, is able to interpret dreams. And again, I encourage you to read this story. But one of his boys, he was in prison, gave the guy the, the interpretation of his dream. Dude was supposed to be like, oh, Joseph, when I get out, man, I'm going to tell the king about you. I'm going to put a good word for you. Dude forgot about him. It was cold. You read it? I was like, that was cold. But anyway, Joseph gets out. They come before Pharaoh. The guy finally remembers, he's like, oh, man, this is this dude in the joint I meant to tell you about. Oh, my bad. Anyway, they go get Joseph. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh. So he maps out to Pharaoh the plan because there's a famine coming. And we're going to talk about this idea of famines in future weeks as we're talking about generational wealth. You need to understand there are cycles to our economy. And if you notice, there was a famine that Abraham had. There was a famine during Jacob's time. There was a famine with uh, Abimelech and Isaac. And so famines come. That's when the economy does what it does. And either you're prepared or you're not. But if you're thinking generationally, you think about it differently. We'll talk about it in, in the future. So he gives this plan. He says, during these seven years, there's going to be seven years of wealth. The, the harvest is going to be crazy. So he says, what you should do is you should take 20% of the harvest and store it away. Because then there's going to be seven super lean years. But we will be prepared. And so he maps it out. And so Pharaoh is now talking to his wise men. He says, man, that seemed like a good plan. Can we find anyone like this man in whom is the spirit of God? So he realized that the wisdom that this former prisoner had had come from God. He recognized that, wait a minute, this guy is knowing stuff that he shouldn't be able to know. I just shared this dream. And he, I'm sure, wasn't the first one to try to give the interpretation of the dream. They didn't know what was going on. But this dude, like, boom, spits it out. And he's like, wait a minute, this dude's connected to God or something. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. So he sees God's hand on his life. Then watch this. You will be in charge of my palace and all the people are to submit to your orders. 
Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. What just happened here? This dude went from the palace, from the prison to the palace in one move. Unbelievable. And so you see, God can move us where he wants us to be. You don't have the training, so what? You don't have the MBA, so what? You don't have the experience, so what? If God is the one, if he is the source. You see, now, if you fake and lie your way into the job, right, you make up your, you know, you play with the algorithms, you know the key words, you know, right? The technology is spitting out resumes, it kicks your stuff out, you got AI to do your resume, AI is then reviewing your resume, AI talks to AI, and now you still don't get the job, so you got to be careful. But anyway. God can place you in positions where you technically are not qualified. But if God is with you, you see what I'm saying? Now, if you faked and lied and got yourself there, and you, you know, you've seen people who got places by, like, all kind of chicanery, and then they get overwhelmed, like, uh-oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But if God is with you, he'll tell you what to do. Right? And if your aspiration is to be the connector, when I started my new job, I said to my boss, I said, listen, my job is to make you successful. She was like, er? <laughs> like, huh. It caught her off guard. She wasn't expecting that. And that's typically not how people roll up on people. And little by little, basically anything that I wanted, she gave me because why? I was trying to advance the work of the organization. I was trying to what? Be a blessing. New boss, same line, same response. Like what? And you, here's the truth. You want to be promoted, you want freedom. Focus on making the, whoever you work for, successful. And if you're an entrepreneur, your job, I want, I want you to be successful. I sell whatever I sell. I, I sell cords. Listen, this cord will change your life. You need this cord. Have you ever been, right, you resonate, you talk to them, you talk about their needs. Have you ever been on your phone and it's the middle of the call and your phone dies? What you need is one of these remote charger situations. And of course you need the cord. I just sell the cords. You need this because, listen, without this, this is useless. And I want to help you. I don't ever want you to lose power again. I got y'all ready to buy cords already. Y'all feeling, you're like, how much is the cord? See, you should take one right now. Now, this is a custom cord. This ain't, hey, this is not one of them grocery store cords, no. This cord is $55. But this is the only cord you'll ever need. It's USB-C. You can use it to charge your phone. You can charge, listen, I can charge the charger with this Do you want one? (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Because the focus is what? On you, your pain, your need. Not I'm trying to get broke off selling these $45 cords. It's like, no, I want to serve you. I want you to be blessed. I don't ever want you to have a power shortage, ever. Lifetime guarantee on the cord. Time to tell you, man, this stuff will change your life. Anyway. I put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring. Here, now listen. listen. I'm going to read the verse right. He took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride around in a chariot as his second in command. And people shouted before him, make way. Thus, he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Now, think about this. You know, his brothers. You know good and well, you want the ring, you want the gold, you want the clothes, you want the truck, the truck. But instead of you being focused on getting the stuff, you see what happened here? Because he made the king successful, he made Pharaoh successful. He gave him all that stuff that he wanted. You see the chariot, got spinners, the rims. You know what I'm saying? Got the music playing. Got the gold. Y'all know, right, you're on 40s. Exactly. <laughs> Riding on 40s, double dubs. What? 
are you kidding me? He says that stuff that we often want, God already has. But as we are faithful and as we serve others and we serve as the connector, the stuff that we want, he can provide without any effort on our part. Oh, my gosh. If we connect people to the connector, to the blesser, people will bless you. So rather than you trying to be blessed, focus on the blesser and focus on the people that God wants you to connect the blesser to. And God got you. All right, let's, it's important. Don't forget that we're just the connector. God is the blesser. Now, here's the problem. Sometimes we get a little silly and we are here blessing, right? And we got folks connected to us, but we forget. Either we get disconnected from our history, those values, that stuff that our parents and grandparents taught us. We forget that the only reason we're here today is because of what they sacrificed, those lessons that they taught us. You know, that stuff that my, my grandmother taught me. Pay your bills before you eat. I'm very careful. Praise God, I'm debt free. Completely. But it's like, listen, pay your bills before you eat. So what that does, two things. A, it keeps you from making crazy bills. <laughs> Amen. If you say, I'm not going to eat, <clears throat> based on my bill load, you're like, you know what, I'm going to bow back on these bills a little bit. But what it says, that was a value. Like, listen, your word is bond, the old people used to say. Amen. If you tell somebody you're going to pay them, we don't need to let some of that old stuff go. We need to reclaim that word is bond. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> you may need to reclaim some of that stuff. Anyway, don't forget that we're just the connector. God is the blesser. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he was quickly brought from the dungeon. So this is before, Pharaoh, before Joseph got into the palace. So I'm doing a, 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 what they call it in the movies or whatever, a prequel. So I'm taking y'all back an episode. Pharaoh sent for Joseph. And he quickly brought from the dungeon. This is when he was still locked up. He shaved, changed his clothes, and he came before Pharaoh. Watch this. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. And no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you, that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. This is one of the most important books in the Bible. This thing struck me. It is so important. You see, when you're out here blessing people and people giving you the accolades and like, oh man, we just love um, Sister Margaret works here and we're prosperous because of her and we're successful and, and, and Javia, our prophet is up and the kids learn and the world has changed. The temptation is to claim the credit. Well, you know, I'm just out here doing what I do. You know, nice like that. And Joseph says something. Then again, if you get this, and, and I'm going to tell you, I, so this is one of my verses for my devotions, and, and I miswrote it, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Verse 16 says, I cannot do it. You did what I did. It doesn't say, but God can. <laughs> he says, I can't do it, but God will. Yeah. Not that he can. The can is irrelevant. It's that he will. Yeah. I can't. Can you get our prophets up? No. Can you sell the cord? Not really. Can you? Can you? No. But God will. I can't, but God will. I can't, but God will. I can't, but God will. So whenever you're tempted, when people are gassing you up, telling you how great you are, remind yourself what my man Joe said. I can't, but God will. You see the confidence that he had? He's like, listen, bro, I heard, King said, Pharaoh said, I heard, word on the street is, like, uh -uh. Let, let's disabuse you of the notion that it's about me. I can't. But his confidence said, but God, not God can so what? I don't care about God can. He said, God will. And so when you know that you are connected to the source, when you know that you're plugged in, when you know that it is God that is giving you favor, 
when you know that the, 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 the promotions or the sales or the, the kids performance or the whatever area of life you are trying to perform in and to be successful, when you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, I am connected to the source. And my task is simply to be the connector to the source. You can be very confident and say, you know what, I can't. But God will. I think, unfortunately, this is sad. Much of the reason that people are not interested in our Jesus is because of the raggedy life we live in front of them. People are drawn to success. You know, we talk about the law of attraction. <laughs> the law of attraction, the real law of attraction, is when we are successful because God has made us such. You then earn the... Listen, you... <laughs> You can talk to Jesus about as much Jesus you, you want. If the profit is up, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You bring it in $10 million a year. Um, let me see. Brother Tony will be giving us a sermon this afternoon in the lunchroom. We encourage everyone to attend. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're making the business work, you want to talk about Jesus? You Listen, you want to anoint folks? Does, the anointing will help. Listen, y'all, we have a prayer line. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sister Alberta will be having prayer at lunch every day this week. You are expected to be there. There are mandatory meetings. Go ahead, Sister Alberta. In the name of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? If you're killing the game, it opens the door and gives you opportunity. People don't care. They like, when, if it's Jesus is what's working, bring me some Jesus. Amen. But when we mess represent Christ, and when we, we late for work and blame Jesus, we don't hit our numbers and we have excuses. You know success never makes excuses. Never. If you're hitting your numbers, <laughs> are you showing a profit? We're going through the church budget. We're looking at stuff. Some of the stuff needs some help. Some others. We don't even spend time on the stuff that's working. Like, <laughs> next. When, listen, that's how you build your consultant business. You want to have a consultant business? People come to you and ask you, hey, what you doing? I need, I need a coach. You know what you're doing. Can you help me? So we're here to connect people to the blesser. Connect people to the blesser. The be an accurate representation of the blesser. And your, your evangelism work and all of that, the most impactful place where you can be an evangelist is at work. Right? Don't I get the mic in my hand on Sunday morning? I want to be an evangelist. No. The people, there's people out there that need Jesus. And when you are representing him well, even in prison, this dude is locked up and got the keys. He junior warden in prison. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Warden Junior, dude, like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and get some lunch. Y'all, y'all listen to this dude. He went on about his business. Wouldn't you want an employee like that? Wouldn't you want somebody that you know you can lead the whole business to them and you don't even have, and it's going to be more productive with you absent? I'm going to go practice my vacation skills. Amen? I'm going to go practice vacation and you go here and handle this. That's, that's who we're supposed to be as Christ followers. That's, what, that's that intergenerational stuff. And then when you have a kid that needs a job or a nephew or a cousin, you can call somebody and say, hey, so-and-so, I have a relative that needs a job. I have a friend that needs a job. And they're thinking, oh, they like you? They're going to bring the blessing? I take a, I'll create a job. I'll start a business. And so if you want to excel, if you want to be in a place where you can even leave generational wealth, because wealth has to be created first, amen? <laughs> Before we start creating generational wealth, we've got to create wealth. But that wealth begins in a relationship with God and allowing him to use you to be the connector. And understand that the real wealth is in relationship with Jesus. And so today, if you never made Christ your king, I want to invite you. You want to experience this life we're talking about. You want to be blessed. What I can do today is to connect you to the blesser. I can connect you to the blesser. It's not really me. It's him connecting you, using me as a vehicle, as a vessel, as the power strip. 
Or today, if you, as a believer even, stuff is not working quite right, I want you to ask yourself, from today forward, how can I be a blessing? How can I bring God's favor, his care and protection everywhere I go? And I promise you, that one question will change the trajectory of your life. Because it takes the focus off of you. Because of principles like the law of sowing and reaping, if you sow blessings, they multiply and they come back. So is there somebody today, you want prayer, ask the prayer partners to come. Somebody want to come today and be prayed for. Somebody just want to be a fire starter. You just want to come up here and stand because you know it's hard for other people to get up. Come up here and act like you're trying to do something. But I invite you today. Somebody want prayer, please come. We love the opportunity. And for those of us who you're still sitting in your seat, that's okay. But I want you to pray that God will make you a blessing. Like God, make me a blessing. I want to be a blesser. I want to be a connector. Anybody want to be a connector? Connectors in the house. Yeah, if you want to be a connector, I want to pray with you as well. And if you know you've been a little off, that's okay. God forgives. You got this word. You're like, all right, I'm going to be a connector. I'm going to be a blesser. I want to change the world. You can do that. Love to pray with you, pray for you.
with you. He is with you. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. Father, I pray a blessing over all of these, your people. Oh God, as we depart today, but don't leave your presence. Father, I ask that you would allow this church, this kingdom community, oh God, to aspire, desire, and commit to be those who will connect people to you, the blesser. Allow us, Lord God, every place we go to ask, how can we be a blessing? Oh God, we know that you are the controller of blessings, that you are the source of all blessings. You've assigned to us to be your representation in the earth. And so, God, allow us to leave today changed. Allow us to leave today asking the question in every situation, how may I be a blessing? And we know that if we are faithful in being a blessing, Lord God, you will cause people to bless us. So transform our minds. Help us to understand the true meaning of generational wealth. And that's the ability to pass on we've received from you to generation after generation and generation so that when we ultimately get to heaven there will be people there who because of us what we've done for them as the connector to you that they will experience both now abundant life and eternally eternal life we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Turn to the person on your left and your right. Tell them, my pastor loves you.